Heyo, my Planet Goes with Friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Fairground Farms Let's Build. And in today's video, we're going to be uh, going over everything else that I added into the Fairground Farms. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Alrighty, I'm joined here with the hot dog, Wix. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to go and talk about our Fairground Farms project again. And this is me building the project and um, what you guys will see up all the way through this last 37 minutes or however long this episode is, um, is everything that I ended up doing for uh, my portion of getting things started in Fairground Farms. And I got a little bit burnt out um, and I passed it over to Wix. Wix came in to save the day. Uh, so the, the next episode that you guys will see is uh, all you, right Wix? Yep. And uh, you do you know how how is it just going to be one episode? How how, did, how many hours of recording do you have? Mm, I think I have about a little bit over three hours, but uh, I wasn't completely finished with what I was doing, so there might be two episodes. Okay, so and then you pass it back to Chant. Yes. Three three hours at eight times speed. What is that going to be? It'd be like fifteen minutes, wouldn't it? It'd be a short episode. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Um. So yeah, but quick My, one, and you did um, the market area that I was just like, I didn't have it in me to do the market area, it just kind of hit, hit my uh, limits there, <laughs> and um, Wix has always done little market, I found a little gummy bear, I don't know if you saw that for a second there, Yeah, <laughs> there's a gummy bear stuck to the fence, um, I thought that was adorable, we didn't see that in the blueprint spotlight, um, sneaking in from Gummy Island over there. <laughs> Uh, so this fence here, it was the, my favorite fence out of everything that we saw from people. Um, <laughs> it, it looks like a rickety old wooden fence, but it's made out of those like candy, what are they called? Like the, sh the sugar strips, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, look, it's a really nice fence. It really is the way they coil around and the, the boards are all like ratty and broken. And it, it's just, it's so organic and fun i don't know uh, so you'll see a lot of fence building or fence placing in this episode luckily at eight times speed it goes super super quick but i must have placed fences for an hour or two uh oh god <laughs> yeah that's super painful right um that's what you got to do with planet coaster sometimes all right you just mm -hmm. duplicate, move, rotate, place, duplicate, move, rotate, place, and until something comes together. And that's, I did a lot of that this episode because I get the crops in, get all the fences in, um, there's some orchards, and uh, what else did I do? The, 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 the petting zoo, the, the farmland petting zoo area. Um, there's probably some other stuff in there, but it was a lot of duplicate, duplicate, place, duplicate. So that, that's naturally why I got uh, a little bit burnt out, and I was like, I can't, I, I don't have it in me to do the market, so <laughs> definitely needed yeah. Wix to pick it up from there. Um, and I, I gave it, I gave you something that was like not such a repetitive task, you know. So. Mm -hmm. You could go into it fresh with creativity. It's not like I passed it over to you and said, "Give me fences," right? <laughs> no, you did. You did that for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I made sure to. I made sure to do the grunt work and give you something fun to do. Um, so, yeah, I, I did I, play some fences myself, though I remember, but uh, not a lot as you do, though. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of the grunt work done in this episode, so uh, just bear with us, guys. Um, but I think the end result of what you'll see in the next 30 minutes is, is pretty pretty good. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. Um, you know. Um, I mean, you can already see now that it's starting taking shape just because you're putting all these fences around. Yeah, the, the rolling hills had a really nice look, and and uh, when I did show the roll, the the like the the bear, air like I worked. This is day two of me working, and I did that first day. The last video you guys saw is essentially all my what I did on the first day and there was a lot of um well there was five hours of recording or something and you look at it and it doesn't seem like there's all that much there's still a lot of downtime in between and like me hemming and hawing and uh you know we have a hundred blueprints to look through <laughs> so I mentioned that a little bit in the last video it's like 
Um, while these blueprints are very helpful, it's it's also like it's pretty hard to like figure out what you're gonna do with them all and how you're gonna try to use them and where yeah. you're gonna place them and and then like finding a place to put it down and then kind of conceptualizing is it gonna fit? Can I do this? How do I yeah, change the, it? The tricky part is to like take two different uh, blueprints and see if they're like the transition between them is is good or not too. I mean, do they really go well together and such? Yeah, we we have to make uh, all these work cohesively together in, mm -hmm. in some way. And um, but what's cool about Fairground Farms is that everybody did something kind of unique. And what we did is we made sections. So it's like while this is one area of a park, it has like eight areas in this park area <laughs> right does that make sense yeah and you guys will see that come together in the very i guess last episode or the presentation or whatever we end up doing um and you'll you'll, you'll definitely see that coming together here but you know we have the syrup farm the honeybee farm and then i mentioned uh, this episode i do the little animal pit and i guess some other surprises in here um pit <laughs> It's not. It's a. It's a pen. We don't throw them in a hole. Um, so barbaric. That's what happens. Yeah, with the animals. It's quite crazy. Before I pass this to Wix off, I did a selection, and there was sixty-six thousand pieces in Fairground Farms that I Whew. that I ended up placing. Well, I guess eight thousand from Coaster Cat. So I placed fifty-eight thousand pieces. Now, now what I you doing I to us, Johnny? I didn't build them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just modified them and made them work, and um, but you guys didn't. Those the blueprint spotlights were wonderful, and everyone did a great job. But mm -hmm. um, it's nerve wracking. I mean, this area of the park is already down to thirty FPS, I think. But luckily, when you look away from it, it kicks back up. So yeah, yeah. Because we're building around the outside of the park, it might not be the worst park in the world. But loading <laughs> loading times are gonna hurt. Um, yeah. Definitely. Oh. So Chant goes, uh, I was like, do you like these like pop uh, lollipop farm? Like I was like, it's going to be really repetitive. She goes, I think you should make a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll make a rainbow. And um, yeah, that's, that's why we need Chant's vision and uh, the lady's touch. Because I would have never thought of a rainbow. <laughs> no, me neither. And um, and you know, just I'm placing it down, and I'm like, I'm unsure of myself. And you just I ask her for her opinion, and she suggests doing a rainbow. And I'm like, that's a pain in the butt, but I'll do it. Um, and man, does it pay off! Uh, but you got to see, like, doing this freaking hill, um, like crops on a hill, it's not the funnest job. <laughs> No, but uh, you're doing a good job so far, though. And here's the problem is, like, I thought, like, at one point you'll see me try to do it more efficiently. Like, what if I do multiple rows? The thing is, a hill, it curves on your yeah. x-axis and your z-axis and your y-axis. So it's curved. It's around. It's a sphere. So um, you, you can't do rows. And you have to do them literally... Two by two. Uh, I could at least grab the two by two, and that's what I did here, right? Um, and and that did work, but yeah. So a little groups of two duplicated along, and uh, just you just gotta rinse and repeat, and hammer away, and and I think that freaking lollipop crop took me an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, and uh, I got a little bit hacky and cheaty and, you know, a little uh, for the other ones, but they're smaller, they're less spread out, so I could just kind of, like, drop, wiggle, fidget, and mush, and mush and push and fill. And I, I got the other ones to go a little bit quicker, uh, and they were smaller crops, but I put a good variation in. This is the, the tallest crops, um them being lollipops so having them at the back was probably the best idea so that you know they if you had them in the front then you wouldn't see the hills and mm -hmm. uh chant was saying that she really loved the rolling hills and when you get the path working in um you guys would have saw that in the last episode in the cinematics is you know the, the rolling hills they if you just put a little bit of like light grass um paint strips on it like just rows 
it looks fine playing. <laughs> you know, it gives you this nice vista, it gives you this nice scenery. And, um, you know, I, I almost didn't want to put any crops on it at all and just leave it. Um, and, I, and I think that's, again, something I mentioned in the last episode is that uh, going into future projects, I think we can let the terrain do most of the work and do these big mega parks. But instead of like, right now we're detailing with a fine brush, right? We're, we're detailing everything, like with a fine brush. And in future parks, I think what we should do is broad strokes. So if you think like a painter, like um, make make a big mural as as opposed to this like crazy labyrinth of juxtaposed details. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, big sw sweeping strokes. Use the terrain, and you could have something like we have here in Fairground Farms, where you have rolling hills for just like five times the length of this lots of paths and then you have some you know small little details here and there but it serves the purpose of just being background scenery that you see while you're on a ride or a coaster you know mm -hmm. so i think we can you know we'll do some stuff like that and have some really fun parks in the future but here it's all about the details it's candy land it's chaos it's <laughs> we gotta have those candy crops so um we had to do what we had to do here so i didn't i was a little bit worried or concerned that we would lose the look and feel of the rolling hills but um i try to do these like kind of square patches that didn't cover the whole hill obviously i don't want to cover the whole hill because it'd take me friggin three hours per hill <laughs> rather than an hour but it also yep. it, it gives you the square pad and um Something about that, it looks... It, I, I don't know. What do you think? I think it looks okay. I like it. I like it better with uh, with crops on. Yeah. It's just like it's, a little square patch. Yeah, yeah. Much better. Yeah. It's, and I can see why this is taking uh, some time. And I mean, you, you did go in and did all the... What you say, like the, the detail work. Uh, and that's usually also what takes a lot of... You know, spirit yeah. at some point sometimes. Uh, but you and did a good job. Thank you. And, and and you look at this blueprint here. I'm technically only using like what six pieces from that guy's blueprint. But yeah, the the actual blueprint he provided. Well, I couldn't just place it, fit it, and slide it in. <clears throat> uh, the concept is essentially what he submitted, right? Mm, yep. Um, it is. And those tractors are freaking amazing. And there's three different variants of that tractor. And I use. A different one on every field and this one's meant for plowing or like I don't know mowing over crops um, so I use that over here um, and, and and it's it's in the middle of working that one's like laying little marshmallows so I yeah I use these I think I used four of them or duplicated one and used the other two so um, yeah I, ha I, I really love the tractors so those were a great blueprint and then like the, yeah. the rows of popsicles that he had the idea of mowing them over I took that concept and with chance suggestion turned it into a rainbow crop and we still have his concept sitting there if you look at the two of them you're like okay I see where you got that idea um, we just kind of improvised and, and modified it and same with this crop here I just wanted to flat out use it I didn't want to have to deconstruct it again uh, so this one, yeah, but this one was really high on the part count, and I'm still a little bit concerned about it. But you know, I was starting to see if I could wiggle the edges. Uh, it doesn't really work too well, like I said, on a a hill because you still got the other way to rotate it. Yeah. Um, and, and <laughs> as I'm doing this, I'm like, am I gonna have to break it apart? And I was determined to just wiggle fit this thing in. <laughs> and, I. Go ahead. I understand. I understand why though, because it's to do that. It doesn't all look alone. easy. Yeah, and and it's this one was one of those things where there were such long crops that like I could break the plant out, and then I was like looking at the plant. It was part of like roots, and then they had all those jube jubes, and I was just like, well, I would just basically again use his concept, and um, I would just rebuild his plants myself more efficiently then I was like that's another two hour job um, to rebuild the asset different color variants and then place plop duplicate so it's just like okay let me see if I could wiggle this in um, 
if it's not perfectly curved or perfectly smooth, that's that's okay. But I did a pretty good job of wiggling it in, and uh, it looks like it fits and flows to the terrain. And so again, going back to what I said in the last video, guys, if if you can build these blueprints for us in groups, like if those crops are already pre-divided, every single plant was on its own, and then like you just select them all and upload that together. When I open it up, I can actually select each individual plant and use the ones I want. I could have made that farm way less pieces and um, you know it would have taken me a little bit longer to duplicate rotate and place them but I think it would have been part count efficient and you know a little bit more natural looking but instead I had a hodgepodge wedge it in um, this this little peppermint farm here is from the uh, the syrup farm it was that that blueprint it was a little bit of a side piece on that I decided to give it its own area um, growing little peppermints so uh, I think it was Mina again, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so shout out to Mina. We're using a lot of her stuff here. Um, from I, Everything in that syrup farm blueprint was used, and uh, I really loved it. So here we had... I, I was looking through all the different crops that people gave us. People gave us a lot of crops, but nothing really works that well in terms of... Uh, placing it on hills. So <laughs> and I'm also trying to think, like... Which crops can I get onto the field? So uh, these are basically just candies. I probably could have just grabbed one of those candies, duplicate, place them. But, <clears throat> you know, it was the person's blueprint and I wanted to try and use it. So I just sliding them into place. They already went through the effort of randomizing them at different heights and different, you know, widths and stuff. So basically want to use their pattern and then their little candy corns with the roots and stuff I don't want to have to rebuild all these things but instead just slide them into place and that way it still looks like that person's somewhat authentic blueprint <clears throat> or mm -hmm. you know deconstructed yeah, version yeah. yeah and I'm also not just rebuilding it from scratch because I could have just taken candy corn and just placed it all about randomly but again it's about using their variation their cluster types um, to kind of bring in the authenticity of this is so-and-so's blueprint. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to get everybody's crops in here, or at least all the crops that were viable to be placed on these hills uh, without having to recreate everything myself because I um, basically had to do that with the lollipop field and I, I want to try and make people's work so it is working here i'm just sliding it all into place dropping it down sliding it in place and i could have probably used you know how you can use the m key and it just snaps to the ground um i, I was thinking about doing that and i tried it here for a few it just it floats and it sticks to the ground perfectly you want some that are kind of coming out of the ground or just starting to crop up you know what i mean like sunken in yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that way they, they have randomization in all their sizes and shapes, right? So, again, I, I, I decided that this this was probably the best way to go about doing it. Um, and, yeah, it looks Yeah, it, it, it works fine. It really does. Yeah. It looks like crops. And looking through the crops that were provided to us from... Uh, from everyone we didn't have a whole lot of options so i think these are the three made or four major ones that i went with and then you know the, the the we still have the rolling hills we have lots of green area there and then you know there's a little like something a little bit missing here so i think i don't know if that's what i do next but there's some little things that i go and do to touch it up and obviously the tractors and put a few hay bales in there and um little market stands and you just little little scattered props throughout um and you, you saw that wix right mm, yeah and, and that, that that gives a little bit more of a color pop and like a little bit more randomness right definitely um yeah so this uh that hay bale that, that you saw there that's from um dead eye duck again he used those lollipops to create hay bales for the farmer foxy um, thing. So here I'm what I'm doing is creating a couple of variants a variant of five a variant of three and then one by itself Then I could just group them together duplicate and rotate them again That's like it's all about being efficient in your groups guys something that someone could use make a couple variants Keep them in a group don't merge them all you could just grab it and move it around and I love that way of working Like it makes building in planet coaster so much easier and more fun Like what you want to try to achieve in planet coaster in your blueprints that you give to people is is clusters of 
assets. If it's all merged together and it's all glued together, then it's, you know, it's just something that you plop down. But if it's a bunch of different things with variants, sizes, shapes, that are all in their own groups, what you're giving them is a palette of brushes to go paint a beautiful picture with. The other way of doing it is you just give them the painting. <laughs> And right, I would much rather paint my own painting. So, you know, having like all these little mints in their own groups and their, the baskets in their own groups, uh, four different variants of them, some spilled over, some not, one by itself, you know, doing these things and thinking about these things with your blueprints, guys, is so much smarter because when someone downloads their blue, your blueprint and they place it down, they go, oh, I can, I can now expand this, make it bigger, you know, use more variants. And, and then you just get so much variety stretched out amongst your park. And what it allows people to do is build parks. <laughs> and I saw a YouTube comment the other day of someone saying like, you know, been watching your channel for a year, finally got the game, played for an hour, and uh, it wasn't for me, you know, it takes too long to do anything. And uh, and I, I returned it. Um, and, and uh, you know, return it to Steam within the first hour. And he, he said it was thought it would more be like more RCT1. And I, I have to speak to that because after I played Planet Coaster for a bit, I went back to RCT1 and I played that. And, you know, me and my cousin, if you guys dig through my channel and just type in RCT1 on my um, videos, one thing I did when I was just doing YouTube as a hobby way, way back when I started, me and my cousin did a lot of the videos together and uh, we just had fun playing games. We had a Planet uh, RCT1 build off. So we would, the only thing we would show in the videos is the show and tell. So for uh, every objective in that game or every scenario was timed. Um, so we would, we had this rule where you're not allowed to pause it ever and you start the scenario and you got to get building. And we would just sit there and build for an hour or two until the t the year five came up and it said S scenario is now finished right uh would you like to continue playing we would say no and we'd save and then we'd do a show and tell so the videos were the show and tells but it was amazing because we made mega parks like mega parks that were detailed that had scenery sometimes like i think cody even wrote like winner or his name or something with uh flowers like he he did some amazing stuff and like um some of the detailing and amazing things that you would see in Planet Coaster, we were doing in our parks. But the tools and the way the game works, just everything goes literally 20 times faster. You just boop, 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 bring it all together. Now, you know, just it's the nature of the game being 2D and, you know, uh, runs super smooth. And it's just a little bit easier to make things happen. Um, so uh, where was I going with this? Um, it, the, the person that bought the game was probably expecting that, like, I'm going to build a, a Planet Coaster Park in a couple hours, right? Yeah, that's never going to happen. But it can. That's what I'm saying. Going back to these blueprints being grouped together and giving somebody some tools, you can then use broad strokes and duplicate, rotate, and place them all together and use these kits to make stuff really, really quickly. And um, and we're seeing that here with what I'm doing. I build fairground farms pretty much through and through, and then you come in and, and do some touch-ups. We built it in like three days using people's stuff, right? So you can yeah. build these mega parks in Planet Coaster using other people's blueprints. It's just a matter of finding the right collection, finding the right, you know, you need the whole kit. You need the whole kit to make it happen. And we're asking you guys to build our kit for us, so we end up getting everything we need. So, um, while it goes really quickly, not everything works. So, in, in this case, like, we need you guys to think about these groups going into the next ones and how you can make it a little bit more efficient for us to use multiple different ways. Um, and, and also continue that forward into the workshop. Maybe there's something you really enjoyed building, make an entire kit, make an entire collection, and just make a whole series where someone can hit subscribe all, and they can go make a park, like a really nice park that's completely themed around whatever you chose to do. And you know, you have all the small decorations, you have the custom fences, the custom bins, the custom ride skins, and um, all these little knickknacks that they can, that are all nicely grouped where they can duplicate re repeat you know mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, a nice example of that here is this kettle corn farm uh, or ride uh, well it wasn't all grouped the popcorn was spread out in such a way where I could marquee select it and uh, move them all around so I want to increase the volume of popcorn but um, I was like what do I do with this popcorn because we have popcorn sheep um, so you see me place those six little corn crops 
I literally sent a chant a message and I was like, can you make me some <laughs> corn crops? Like 15 minutes later, she messaged me back with literally the most perfect outstanding crops. Look at these. They're amazing. They're, they're not like skinny corn, but they're cartoon and chunky and fat. Like it's something that you would expect to see in, in our candy land. You know, they, they look like candy crops. It's like candy. Yeah. It's like candy real. It's like real candy corn. <laughs> They're great. Um, Good job. So yeah, a cu couple variants. I uh, she, because she put them in rows, I was able to separate them into six groups. So I have my six variants, and I just kind of randomly scattered them about. And these six items are enough to actually build an entire area with, mixed in with the cattle corn and the sheep. So just having chance like corn crops alone, like look at this. You duplicate, duplicate. Look at how cool that looks when you when it comes together. Um, it looks like a cornfield, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it really does. So amazing work on these ones, Chant, and I'm, I really love the way it looked because, yeah, it, it, it corn, it, while it may not seem like a candy thing, it still is a treat. It's a savory treat. And um, we all have had... I think we had a whole conversation about this in another video about the, uh, the popcorn. Um... The, the, the bubblegum popcorn and stuff it was one of the blueprint spotlights, I think. But we've had... Yeah. There there are places that make specialty popcorn and they coat it. Um, everyone's had caramel corn and, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. So um, that is a treat. And the fact that Chant made them out of candies is even more perfect, you know? <laughs> so it makes sense for us to have a cornfield. And then we have these, like, really cool corn sheep that somebody made. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this popcorn off to the side and we get where all the the that popcorn like that's the popcorn machine and it's taking the kernels directly from our cornfield and popping them there and it's using the guests inside of a machine <laughs> to pop it and then these we have the sheep farm that I placed off to the left I guess some of the sheep just like escaped and uh somehow got mutated with the the, the cornfield <laughs> So I, I had fun with this because someone gave us these sheep that are amazing, and um, I think it's Raven Ravel, right? Probably yeah. that seems about right. Um, these are amazing. So she gave us the extra buttery ones. So I had this idea, like I, I gotta make a butter pool, and uh, the sheep, <laughs> the sheep, and the like, just like walk into the butter pool and they get all buttery, and the other ones are all looking around at them, and it's a little popcorn sheep party there. Um, of, of course, uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know if Coaster Cad made his own sheep up there on the, uh, the coaster, but those ones with the glasses and the, like, the little chubby cheeks are freaking adorable. They're my favorite sheeps by far. I mean, I love <laughs> the popcorn sheeps, I, I really do, but those sheeps with the derpy glasses and the little fat pudgy cheeks, something about them just, like, it, it, it I don't know, I, it just, <laughs> it just goes to my soul it, I don't know <laughs> it just makes me feel so good looking at those little things they're so cute so I, I was like I gotta use them and, and make his own little sheep farm area we saw him give us these cows they were amazing as well yeah they're adorable so just using variants so with the sheep uh, the, the, <laughs> the floss sheep that they cut the floss off the candy sheep and so we got candy sheep and then we also candy floss sheep and then we got candy corn sheep <clears throat> these are technically edible animals i don't know if it's a petting zoo or if it's like a go snack on a cow feast it's a feast, <laughs> it's a zoo. feast. exactly <laughs> i don't really know what's gonna happen here but <laughs> it's there um and then we have the ducks i thought i'd throw them in there and we had some other ducks so these are all guaranteed picks to get in the park um so this whole area becomes our petting zoo. I don't know why these sheeps have water gushing out of them when you place I them. I think it's. I think it's. They have a trigger uh, as the eyes. Oh, that's the glasses. So. Those things are so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> these bunnies here too, though they are so freaking cute. Yeah, I went a little bit hand with the randomization. I don't know if it's overkill, but it. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's it's all right. It, it's it's cute animals. Who doesn't want to have lots of cute animals? Right, candy but, animals even. <laughs> yeah, it, look at it though. It's I don't know. It's like it's there's a lot of color and there's a lot of animals. Chaotic. I I don't know if it's a little overkill. Um, but 
We can always go and remove some. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's too much. I think I'm, I'm okay with it, but um, I wanted people to see it and not, not just see like two or three cows in a field, and, you know? So, um, and we're manufacturing this stuff, you gotta know, think. Like, we're growing these candy, raising these candy animals so we can, you know, have candy sent to all the other lands. And So we need a lot of them. That was my thoughts. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we gotta we gotta fill it so um yeah so now i've i've gone through and i've got some of our candy patches in we got the syrup farm we got the honey farm we got the uh the orchard that i put in um the grove or whatever so that the, they all grow on trees we got the, the the corn field and then the candy animals so I'm, I'm looking around like how do i fill up some of this other space we had those flowers and i really wanted to use those somewhere so i figured i'd do like a flower field by foxy's farm um it turned out looking pretty decent um i think it was better to use like a uh, a flower field than it would be to you know sprinkle Just those play. flowers everywhere yeah. that would have been a lot of placing and they would have seen random in some areas it was like what you were talking about before like we need these things to look cohesive Mm -hmm. and, and you put these like wild crazy flowers over by the cornfield or the animals and I don't know if it fits you know so I felt like having a crop of flowers seems fine it's a garden right it's out front of Foxy's house um, really love the sign and uh, it didn't work on the ground because we're gonna end up having stuff in front of it so Chance said make it like a real billboard so I raised it up and I built uh, some basic shape pillars. Um, here I'm trying to figure out what the piece is called. I, <laughs> and it's the metal. Metal grates or whatever. Um, yeah, there they are. Boom. Something simple and easy. It works. So I think we'll have to probably do that with the other one. I don't know. Did you do that yet, Wix? No, I had uh, just placed it a little bit. Yeah, we could just Wait. copy paste what I did there or modify it. Um, yeah, because the market covers... I think you sent me a screenshot and I couldn't read her sign anymore. Because, yeah, um, yeah the market gets in the way. So we'll have to prop that one up. Um, there's going to be like a bunch of little, like, I guess, laundry list tasks for us to do. <laughs> uh, still love Taco King's big burly foxy. It turned <laughs> yeah. out more masculine. Um, but it ended up working really well with the one that... Uh, who made that one? Enigmandra? Uh, Enigmandra, yeah. Yeah, so it worked really well with Enigmandras. Now we got the male and the female. It, it just looks like a fa farmer family. Super cute with the foxies pick your own. That You go in, you pick a candy, and they, they juice it for you and turn it into a sweet drink. It's really cute. So this front area, um, you know, it's going to be our farmer market. So when you come into Candyland, you'll see, hey, it's a farmer market. And as you're walking through it, you'll start seeing the big revealing... Uh, curvy hills. I mean, well, you'll see that no matter what. You'll see the market, the hills, and the the, the barn on top. It, it creates a pretty good uh, vista, a, a pretty good shot. And as you go down that main path, you follow it down. You're following the curvy hills. You're seeing the market on your left, seeing the farm on your right. And as you're getting to the center, you start to see the honeycomb bees and stuff like that. And you have points of interest, focal points, and things leading you... Um, Landmarks, landmarks leading your attention, and that's what what a real good park in real life is good at doing. Creating a landmark that says, "I want to go over there," right? Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff was un unintentional, and some of it worked out. I mean, that was like where I was really hemming and hawing on that first episode, and I, I felt like I'd worked on it really long and got very little results because I was just trying to figure out like where these things are going to go and what is that going to look like in the end. You just bar put things down randomly and you miss out on all those focal points and those landmarks. So exactly. you got to really think long and hard where you where, where are you going to put your very first few things and uh, what kind of compositions and landmarks that's going to create. So <clears throat> um, better, better to take your time with that stuff in the beginning and then um, if you get that right, filling should be should go pretty quickly. And that's what this episode's all been about is, all right, we've laid it out. It's just filling fences, crops, you know, putting uh, cornfields in, animals. It's just duplicate place. It's grunt work, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of grunt work going into this episode. But as you guys can see, and you'll, about, you'll see in very few seconds, some cinematic shots 
of, uh, for all of it. We, Chant did not like that white sign on the bee honey, and I agreed it was too bright. So I brought it down to a honey color, and I think that pops a little bit better. Matches those honeycombs as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now the compositions come together with all the grunt work in, and there's a lot of color pops in there, right? Um, it's it, it's starting to look it's like Fairground Farms. Yeah, it really has its charm already. Definitely yeah. feel it. And this big flat open area here, uh, after I passed it to Wix and stepped away, I was like, hey Wix, uh, I have an idea for it. And we'll save that for the next episode for you guys, but I wanted to... Something came to mind, and something that we forgot in this, this er here area, and something we can grow that both Chant and Wix had made for some of our other blueprint spotlights. So I said, well, this would be perfect, and you know, what better people to have in the park than the two people working on it? <laughs> so um, I'm excited to show off what Wix has done there and actually take a closer look myself because uh, all I've seen is a few teaser screenshots. So yeah, this is where I stopped building. Uh, this is where I got to in Fairground Farms. And um, I'd say there was probably a total of 16 hours of me just banging my head against the wall and building and recording. But what you guys saw was a condensed you know, two 30 minute videos. <laughs> um, but trust me, there was a lot more gone into it in terms of uh, looking and sorting through all the blueprints, figuring out what I'm going to do with it. But man, it, it does make it super efficient, right? Because what you guys see there is we, we've, uh, at the time of this recording, we're, we're only, what, 10 or 12 days into this project since the day we announced it. Yeah. And it's pretty that's amazing. all this stuff here. I mean, 66,000 pieces in a park um, in 10 days. That's crazy to me. It's unheard of. Yeah, that's so, crazy. So amazing job to all the blueprint builders. I mean, we couldn't have done this without you. Uh, amazing work to Chant for, you know, setting us up with this amazing story, idea, and concept, and terrain work. And then again to Coaster Cat for setting the tone of that scene with that coaster right off the bat. Yep. Yeah, it gave me a lot to work with going in, and, um, and then Wix is picking it up from here and then passing it to chant and you guys should see the end result fairly soon yeah it's gonna be awesome yep exciting stuff so there you guys go that's uh that's gonna do it for this episode of let's build thank you so much for watching hope you all have a fantastic day and we will see you in the next video bye now bye <laughs>